Hello, my name is Paul Morris and welcome to Planet Healers. And today I'm going to be talking about mapping. So we're going to be looking at mapping. You can use that for uh, small projects. Maybe you're doing a garden project or maybe you're doing a larger ecological restoration project. So I'm going to be looking at Google Earth Pro and how I use that to map on different properties. So let's start off with uh, showing you the different menus. So up here, you can type in different things. You can type in, you know, the address of your, your particular house, and it works just the same as Google Map. It'll take you right to that spot. So it makes it very easy to find different things. And then this is my places. If I go into temporary places that I can add. Uh, Oh, sorry, yeah. So you, you right click. That's what I did there. I right clicked and I added a, another folder. So this was just a, a test. I'll just put that down there. And then anything that I want to do will go into that test folder. So as long as I'm clicked onto that one, see the blue line there, then the things will get put into there. So we're down here in test. That's the one you want to go on. And as you can see, as I'm moving around here, these numbers at the bottom change. And these are GPS locations. And then also it tells you things like, so this is the east, and then this is the north down the bottom here. And then you have your elevation and then your altitude. So you can actually, when you go closer, here you can see that your altitude is changing considerably. And if you you click around on your map, you can see, okay, the elevation is changing at different spots on my map. So just moving around, you can go, okay, you know, I know this is a flatland. And then if I move along, it's getting less and less and less here. So you're down in a valley here. And so this is a river. And then you come up to the flatland and you can you can experiment and try different things. So it gives you the elevation for different areas. I'll move back out again so you have a better view. So that's important information for when you're trying to figure things out as well. So up the top here are important things that you need to know. Say I want to pin my house. So my old house is here. And here I'll put in the, the words, it's highlighted in blue, oats, <laughs> house, and then here you can see house appeared. And so then I can just grab this pointer, move it around, say I want it here, and I can also change it. You know, I can say uh, spot one. I want to change it to spot one. And maybe I've got something really interesting down here. And it's like, okay, I can move this thing over here. Whatever this is, is a new spot. And then you just, okay. And then that spot can't move around anymore. If you need to edit it, you can click on it. And then you'll see it goes right to that one. Actually, maybe I'll make a second one. And I'll put that on the house here, just so I can demonstrate. And maybe I want to change that. So you go to this, you don't want a yellow pin, you want a different color. So um, I, maybe I'll say an H instead for a house. So I clicked on the H. And you can you know change the opacity, you can change how big it is, you can change the color. So you can do all these things within that. And that was this little tab right here. And maybe I just want to have an H. And so I just take off the house. And now it's an H. And hit OK. 
And so if I want to find this, say I want to go back to spot two, I just click on spot two, and you can see over here, it's moved to spot one. And if you look at this, while well, I change the house, you click on the house, it moves to there. So if I want to work with spot one again, so I want some more information, you go on here, right click, and you go down the bottom, get information. So what information does it have? Here's your zone, and then here's your GPS location. So if you're looking at something in specific, you find the GPS location. Maybe you find something out in the middle of the woods that's interesting on your Google map if you want to go find it. So you take the Google map, the, the GPS locations, and you take your, your phone with the GPS or you have a, a GPS uh, that you bought, and you can go and find whatever it is out in the middle of nowhere. So also you can change the, the style and the color. This is more important when you have uh, other arrangements, but you can change the view. Here's a latitude, longitude, and all the different information that you need. Altitude, you know, is it stuck on the ground or have you put it up in the air somewhere? So here it is. I'm going to go to a different setting. So I'm going to take us back out. So we have those two spots marked. And say I want to mark the property boundary. So that's what our next one is. So a polygon. So we're going to change the name of that. Property boundary. And so, oh, I just took it off and hit enter. <laughs> Back to get the info. Okay, so there we are. I need to move you out of the way. So I know the property boundary very well. So I click on this point and then you move to the next one, click. Move to the next one, click. Okay, now you see how I've got this white coming in. So I need to bring this back, go to color and style. So here it says fill in outline. So I only want outline. So I don't want that filled. And the color, maybe I want a, a green. So I change the color. And to say, okay, there's that. And then we'll go over here again. Oh, change the color. Oh, this one's the color, sorry. So we change that one and now our line changed. Okay, so here, and then I know this is a straight line all the way over to about here. And then this one's a straight line all the way over to about here. And then it comes across the top like that. Now you can see this isn't perfect. So it's filled in and, and it is joined back up again. So you can see this line is not quite perfect. So you see how the line changes to green when I go on top of it? Now I click it when that's green and I can move it, that edge around. So maybe this needs to be a little bit more over. Oh, another one in here. So actually you can click on that and then hit delete and it disappears. So you've got that and I can move this point. So it looks more like that. And this point over here, it's a little bit more like this. So if you accidentally go in here and oops, see how I, I want an extra point there. Well, you, do, you can just hit delete and then it disappears. But if you want to have an actual point, say I want to take this piece out. So I click here on the line and let's put another point. And then I click here and it puts in another point, but I don't want this point. So I click on it, delete. Oh, I need an extra point here. So to move to in between these two, you need to click on that and then click here. If you don't click there then, and you go, okay, I want something over here, it does this. So you don't want that. That gives you an idea of the area of the property. And now I'll bring this back out again. So here's our property boundary. And we've worked with our colors. 
and the width of the line. So you can increase the width of the line. Say so I want a nice thick boundary. You can see that increased there. And maybe you want to see through that so you can increase the opacity, which means you can see through the line as well. And then your, your lat longitude doesn't work as well. Attitude, clamp to the ground. But this is the fun part, measurements. So the perimeter is in miles. We don't want that. We want how many meters it is or how many, let's say, kilometers. So how many kilometers is the perimeter of this property? So you have 2.85 kilometers if you walk the lat hole edge. The area, so say we want it in hectares. So we have 38.6 hectares. So I know I'm a little bit off because I know it's 39 hectares. So maybe you want it in acres. So you can change it to acres. And now you know how many acres you've got there. And so you can work with all these different things and find out your area. So I'm just going to hit OK. And say I want to measure an area. Say so here's a field. I want to do a planting on this field. So here I mark the edge. And I just go around the edge with multiple spots because it's more of a curve. And then that's about right. Maybe about like that. A little bit of an adjustment. So, and then I go over to here. How many acres do I have? How many hectares do I have? Most of the time, I'm when you're doing a planting, you want to work in square meters. Nope, square kilometers, square meters. This, so you have 26,000 square meters. So if you're doing a planting, you, you try to understand how, what is the spacing? So most of the uh, herbaceous planting, usually I'm planting at a half meter or 0.3 meters on center. So you, know, you can do the calculations of how many plants you need. If you're doing uh, a seeding, so maybe you, you want that in hectares. So how many hectares do I have that need seeding? So maybe I, you know, rye, I need 40 kilos per hectare. And so then I know how many kilos that I need, 2.64 times the 40. And that gives you the how much seeding you need. If you're doing trees, then again, you're, you're working with your square meters and how many square meters do you, you have for each tree? You know, if you're doing a Milwaukee method, you know, maybe it's only a meter and a half spacing. If you're doing a, more of a forest planting, maybe it's every three meters. So then you need, you know, working with that calculation, you can figure out how many trees you need for that particular area. So build that field one. And so that gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do here. And say there's a path that I want to do. So I know there's a, a roadway here. So I can click on that and just go around. And so the difference with this is it doesn't close. The polygon closes. So here I can just keep going. So I know that the, the road comes up through here. And the road comes to here, all the way up there. And then you can go, okay, well, what are my measurements? That's 1.24 kilometers if I want to make that particular trail. You're doing the trail system on your property. Maybe that's what you want. Maybe you're doing a linear planting. It's like, okay, well, I need to know how many meters. And I know I want to plant my trees every three meters along that. And so then you can figure out how many trees you're going to need to do a planting along that path. Maybe you have to need to double it. You want them on both sides of the path type of thing to have a shaded trail. So that gives you a pathway and you can use that as well. So I'm just going to call that path. Okay. And then some of the other features that I use are the ruler. So when you use the ruler, you can do all of these different things and get measurements for them. So say I want to measure 
uh, this particular line. You click on it and then you click the other end and there you go. Now, if you're doing this more accurately, obviously you want to zoom in much more. So you want to zoom right down as close as you can. Let's find something else that's uh, you know very linear. So zooming down as close as you can, you know, whatever these these lines are, maybe there's some sort of crop. So you go right to the edge and then right to the edge and you can go, okay, these are some sort of a planting row and you just got to put them in at 21 or 22 meters. So it gives you an idea, you know, you can do a, a polygon you know, how big is this particular area? What's going on? Okay. This one. There we go. And that gives you your square meter for that particular area. So you can use all these different things for that. So that gives you a bit of an idea of quick and dirty how to do mapping and you can do all these fun things with it. So when you're planning your project, you know, going right down in as close as possible. There you get rid of that. So, you know, say you want to, to map, here's my, my barn. So you, you mark it out. Here's your barn. Here's this, here's that, here's a greenhouse. So all these things you can you can map out and then put into a, a key and then you have all these different things. So I also wanted to talk about okay, so how you have your map of the the project and all these different things are layers. Each one of these things that you put on here. So say you don't want to see some of these things because they're you know messing up your picture. You don't want to see that path. Okay, maybe you just want to see the property boundary. Okay, here's an image that I can use that I want to, you know, share with different people. This is the property that I'm working with. Maybe I want to say, okay, here's the, the particular field we were working with that we're going to do restoration on so you can show that. So clicking these on and off allows you to, to create a nicer picture. And so what do you do with that? And then you go file. Now, this is a bit, a bit tricky. When you save something, you need to make sure you're saving what you actually want to save. Say you want to save the property boundary only, then you go save and you save to my places. But if you want to save the entire thing, say you want to share that or you want to keep that for later, you need to click on entire file. So all these are underneath this. So you need to click on that first and then go file and then save. If you don't save it in that way, then all you're going to do is get this one. So you're only going to get the property boundary and you won't get all the other information. So if you want just one, that's fine. You're sharing the property boundary with somebody. Maybe you're registering your property for a, a restoration site. That's fine. You just you just do that one. And the other one, saving the image. So this changes it into an image. And here you can put a title on here. So farm. Farm, you can write a description. 95 acre. Or whatever else you want to talk about. And then you close that and you're, you got a little key up there. And, and then map options. So you, you have a legend, actually. You have a little legend up here. We have feature one. If I had multiple features in, in this image, then I could click on those and I could actually give them a different name. So this is... The property boundary. 
So you've got a legend up here. This is the property boundary. And then you can print that. So you can increase the increase and decrease the scale. And then give it a nice print. And you can just save the image and it'll save it to wherever you ask for. So then I'm just going to get out of here. And so then you have all your different options up there. You can find different videos on how to do more uh, fancy stuff with it. But I'm just trying to give you the, the basics, the things that I use all the time. And one of the things that uh, is really helpful is this. So this is a history. So if you're doing a restoration project like this, this is 2024's image, so nice and clear. But you can also go back. You know, this is what it looked like in 2016. This is what it looked like in 1985. Obviously, the imagery wasn't very good back then. But you can move along in time, and you can see some of these changes that are happening. You know, here is uh, this one is being planted. Uh, this area is freshly planted. You know, this is this area hasn't even been restored to forest yet. And then you can go forward in time and see, okay, well, what's going on? Here, the forest is starting to grow. This area is filling in. This one's been recently planted. You know, different things like that. You can see the history, which is really important if you're trying to understand what's going on in a property. You know, here's the winter. <laughs> what does it look like if you're looking for a, see the conifers versus the the hardwood species and, you know, different times of year are appropriate to look at that. So then back to 2024 and different things within the land you can also find. Like here, you can see there's a bit of a wet spot within the field. It's a little bit damper over here. You can see this in this field as well. There's a damp spot. You know, what are the movement in these different areas? You know, here's an agricultural field. Why is this a darker color? Why is this uh, another color? Here you can see that there was probably some sort of stream here that the, the farmers buried. So just these types, different changes in coloration within the field are really important to understand and understanding. You know, here we have a, a hardwood forest, but then somebody's come in and they, they planted a bunch of conifers in one area here. In this area, you can see someone's done tree planting. It's very, uh, very obvious, especially when you look from above, you can see someone's planted them all in lines. So it's a tree planting. Just being able to, to work with the landscape, you know, seeing river systems, where does the river flow, the sinuosity of the river. Uh, in the past, we can look a little closer here. You know, there's, here's an oxbow, you know, here was an oxbow scar where the river went before, another oxbow here. So just being able to work with the landscape and understand, you know, what's going on within the landscape. And again, I, you know, you can look at the, the slope way down here at the river, 180, and then gradually I know higher and higher. So 107. 197 up here, where it was 191, 181 down near the, the creek. So it's, it's the land is gradually sloping back here towards the creek. And different aspects. So it's really important to understand what you're working with. And this is a powerful tool to help you work with that. So thank you, everyone. And subscribe to the Planet Healers website, uh, the YouTube channel, and Look at all our other different videos. Thank you.